Hello and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. This week we're talking to Joe Hart about work and personal life integration. Is it okay to bring our personal lives into work and vice versa? Joe has a really great take on this and a really great sort of uh, formula around it. So I hope you enjoyed this talk as much as I do. It's a really good one, really informative, and I took a lot away from it. Enjoy and have a magical week. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Magical Learning Podcast for this week. As you can tell by the title, we are lucky to have a guest, and it's a great conversation. I'm sure we're about to have the topic is awesome. But before we get to that, before we get to them, let's jump around and see how our regular team is doing. So, Al, how are you going this week? And also, where are you broadcasting from? Oh, today I'm at home in sunny Queensland. And a bit like last week, I went back to the ice bath to give it another go and was really having second thoughts. But interestingly, the people I talked to in there are talking about the mental benefits. And I even watched a show on Disney Plus last night with Chris Hemsworth, who does some incredibly crazy things like surfing in the Antarctic or somewhere up that way. And it's all around the the health benefits of ice bars. So I'm going to keep sticking in there for a little bit longer. That sounds good, Al. We'll have to get you um, on the e-foil down in the Antarctic to give us the full experience. (laughs) <laughs> I went on the stand-up paddleboard this morning thinking I might get a nice bath and I didn't fall off yet. <laughs> well, great work, Al, and good to have you on today. Um, Thank you. No worries. Graham, how are you going today? And where are you, you and Danette are on the same screen for people that will be watching this later. And uh, where are you broadcasting from? I have no idea, Jess, really. <laughs> it's somewhere on planet Earth, I think. We're in, um, in gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous outside. We should be there. We're uh, up at Avalon Beach in the northern beaches of Sydney to help a friend celebrate a birthday. Today, um, my week has been good. We've actually been up here for a couple of days just to acclimatise, uh, though I still haven't got to T-shirt stage like Al. Uh, but no, I've had a great week. Thank you. No worries. That's good to hear. And we're excited to hear next week how the beach went, because uh, I think some of us are in colder environments. So um thanks for rubbing that one in uh Danette how are you going this week yeah good Jez I've had um lots of workshops this week so that's kept me out of mischief um and just to continue the saga with the chickens and the guinea fowl um they were allowed out this last weekend no sign of the fox and they the guinea fowls got spooked by Hero my parents little dog and um so they went flying into the elm tree and the two chickens went racing back into their hutch so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they were very funny, but they're all good, just okay. in case listeners were worried. <laughs> just to clarify the hero thing, if you picture a sort of medium to large bar of soap with legs and a head. <laughs> that's, that's hero. That's hero. He's a chihuahua. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a great one. I think we may he may have featured on our social media previously, but if not, he's definitely, there's a chance for him to get tagged in a photo or video shortly, I'm sure. Um, John, uh, how are you going this week? You're recording from the recording booth there. Yeah, definitely, Jess. I'm uh, driving back from Civic back home. I've got to be home for the end of this because I've got a job interview at 1.30, so I've got to be on Zoom for that. But, um, yeah, Canberra, it's a cracking day in Canberra. I mean, it was only minus 7 when we went running. Well, it felt like minus 7 when we went running this morning. But, uh, yeah, it's cold, but it's, it's beautiful. Um, and I might drop off video just while I drive that's that's probably sensible um and uh we'll probably get your question in first then john so that you can uh hit the meeting as well uh, but thanks for jumping on as well yeah, all good awesome and joe how's your week been yeah my my week but it's, it's been good uh, nothing out of the ordinary this week so yeah it's uh, it's been fairly predictable and you know just uh just one of those weeks and i say that predictable i've got four kids and there's always something unpredictable happening so you know um, but yeah, it, it I can't complain. Awesome, awesome. And um and whereabouts are you broadcasting out of today? Uh Sydney. So in a suburb called Gordon. So on the northern the northern side of Sydney. Beautiful. So we've got we've got people all up and down the east coast here. So that's good to see. Um now Joe, we're so excited to have you on today. And this has been rescheduled because last time when we were about to have it, I got COVID. So uh, Joe was nice enough to move on and do it uh, now for us. So we're really excited to have you on. Uh, Joe, tell us a little bit about yourself for people that might be being introduced to you for the first time. Yeah. 
Thank you. Um, so I'm an organizational psychologist and, and really started my career at uh, a company called Gallup. Um, so you might know Gallup for their Clifton Strengths assessments and uh, their employee engagement expertise. There's lots of research out there that gets quoted regularly. So yeah, great place to work. Just did seven years there. And then, um, you know, after a couple of little stints, went out on my own after that. And I've been doing that ever since. And uh, loosely, it's a, a coaching and leadership development uh, company that I run and a uh, solopreneur, uh, sort of like it that way. You know, I coach people how to how to manage people. I don't like managing people. So, you know, <laughs> c- call me a hypocrite. Um, we all are. And, uh, you know, ultimately, that's how I like it. You know, I've got enough kids to manage at home. That's pretty much a team, isn't it? Um, so, so yeah, that, that's sort of a bit about me. That is perfect. And Joe, um, I think that makes you a great guest and a great person to talk about the topic that you've given us today. So the mm. topic that you've presented, which I thought was an absolutely great one, was work and personal life integration. Is it okay to bring our personal lives into our work and vice versa? What a great conversation. I'm sure it's something that a lot of people, especially after lockdowns, are really struggling with. I know a lot of my friends talk about it all the time. So what a great topic. Um, Before we get into the questions, I just want to ask, what uh, inspired you to choose this topic? Yeah, um, I like that question. So it it is probably one of the most commonly asked questions that I get or conversations that I have in coaching um, and and also um, pushback as well because I'm, I'm big on, um, you know, I'm just going to put it out there. I'm big on work-life integration. I'm big on bringing all of who you are to everything that you do. And, and so, you know, purpose is a big um, pillar of, of that whole idea. And, you know, when I talk to, to purpose and integrating what is most important to you into your work, uh, sometimes people say, well, hang on, do you mean, you know, what's important at home or what's important for the job? And, and that question in and of itself tells me where their, their head's at and the fact that they haven't quite reconciled this idea of, bringing all of who you are to everything that you do. So, yeah, it's, I just find it fascinating when people ask that question. And, of course, I'm a psychologist, so I want to understand that and not judge it. And I'm, I'm curious about it because I, I've always just assumed that everyone wants to get to the point where they can be vulnerable and uh, express truly and honestly who they are in every context, uh, which, you know, I, I think that would be self-actualization. Uh, if we talk about Maslow, but um, I clearly not everyone agrees. So, yeah, well, I mean, it's a great topic. I love that as well, and hopefully, we can all reach self actualization by the end of this podcast. We'll see how we go, you know. Uh, <laughs> but worst let's... case scenario, you can go get a feed. You know, that's it exactly. So <laughs> that's that's exactly right. Well, um, let's jump right into the questions. Uh, John, we'll start with you. John, what was your question, and why did you ask it? Hey, Joe. Um, I guess I'm coming from a point of view of seeing different personalities at work and, and trying to work out, you know, where I fit into all of that. And it's constantly changing. It's an evolving situation as people come and go. But how how can you bring your personality to work and how quickly should you bring your personality to work? And where do you draw the line in, in all of that? Because, yeah, great getting the self-actualization and vulnerability would be fantastic, but not mm-hmm. everyone gets there. Yeah, it's it's true, and look, I, I think um, you know, when it comes to personality, uh, we, we you know let's just call them predispositions or different characteristics sure. that we're we're likely to exhibit without overthinking it. You know, so so often if you're not sure what what your personality is, plenty of tools out there that you could do, but um, generally you've got a sense of where you sit on on the scale of extroversion into introversion, for example or um, openness to experience or, uh, or tough mindedness or vigilance. Right. Yeah. And so, so, you know, common things might be, Oh, you know, I trust people until my trust is broken or yeah. I generally don't trust people until they own it. And then yeah. I open up and, you know, it's like I'm their best friend. So I, th- I think um, it does take time to, to actually, you know, get to know somebody and understand who they are. Um, you know, that that's just, everyone's got a different style, a unique approach to how they do that. Um, I think, uh, you know, what's more important is the environment that that is created in that workplace. And so, uh, 
rather than because people just inherently watch what other people do right they look at the behavior around them they watch it and and that helps them helps inform them what they need to do like what's okay what's safe what's expected and so i think the real danger with our personality is squashing um or or trying to um modify who we are to fit into that environment too much now of course uh of course uh i think you need to to be um mindful about thrusting yourself upon the environment as well um but you know generally speaking in a professional context um it's it's okay to be a bit more bubbly or it's okay to be a little bit more reserved and and that's just who you are um just don't shy away from expressing that and letting people know that that's who you are and that's how you operate. Uh, I think that's, yeah, that's that's my view. Yeah, okay. No, thank you. I mean, it's interesting because the environment conversation is one that follows on, I think it was from last week's um, podcast or the week before where we were talking similar things. So, no, it ties mm. all, all ties in. So, thank you. Mm. Mm. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for that, Joe. That was a great answer. And uh it's, I, I love your approach to this. It's so interesting and uh, it's nice to hear. Um, I might throw it to Danette now. Danette, what was your question and why'd you pick it? Me being me, I picked two questions because <laughs> I can. Uh, so first question was, um, how can leaders support their people in terms of work and personal life integration? Uh, so I might start with that, Joe, rather than giving mm. you two questions mm, mm, and mm. make it confusing. So. And yeah, you know, this is because we we have lots of listeners who are interested in you know how can we support our people mm. for this better. So over yeah. to you. Yeah, well, I think uh, as a leader, uh, there's no better way than practicing what you preach. So for this one, um, if if a leader is saying it's really important that you integrate personal and uh, and work life, and you know you get a nice balance there, and yet they work you know twenty four seven people will do what the leader does because they'll think, well, I respect you, especially when they respect them. I respect you. I think you're fantastic. You're the leader that I've always wanted. So I'm going to work 24 seven too, even though you're telling me not to. Um, Or when the leader prefaces, do as I say, not as I do. And I've heard that many times. It's just, it's sending exactly the opposite message. It's like people instantly go, right, now I have to do as they do. Um, So you know, the, the best way to support it is to, to actually talk about um, your intention and then uh, give people updates about how that's going, right? So say um, you've been made aware through a coaching conversation or through a your discussion with your kids or, you know, maybe it was a health crisis or an event. And so now you need to focus on your health, right? Um, that becomes an important priority. So you actually set the expectation with your team. Hey, there's going to be a few changes. I'm going to knock off every Tuesday early and Friday early because I'm going to go to yoga or gym class or Pilates or whatever. Um, so next time they say, oh, so how are you going with your Pilates? You're like, oh, actually, you know what? I've, I haven't been able to make it since that first week that I said I was going to do it. Oh, yeah, what's going on there? So, okay, now they're talking about where they're struggling, what they need help with. All of a sudden it's vulnerable. Uh, it's true it's honest and you know they learn that yeah their leader's not invincible they're not perfect and this isn't a one size fit, fits all uh, it does take time and it takes effort and holding each other accountable i think it's really important so yeah do it do as do as i do not as i say yeah nice i love that and yeah some really good insights there so my second one is, mm. are there any personal life topics that people shouldn't bring into work? Yeah, far out. This is such an interesting one because, um, you know, I think we all know that absolutely the answer is yes. Uh, um, and uh, however, that you know, the, I'm going to describe a few uh, examples of where I've seen this go wrong or the interpretation of bringing all of who you are to everything that you do. It, it is misinterpreted or it's used as a blunt instrument yeah so so i'll describe um a case where where somebody had um had cancer and and they were relatively young right so they they were struggling with it it was really difficult scenario um they were extremely talking about personality john they were extremely communicative like a big talker talked a lot right needed to talk you know one of those people that you think yeah 
put some marbles in their mouth, chuck them underwater. You can still hear them talk. And, um, you know, awesome. However, sometimes, you know, shut the trap. And um, anyway, uh, I was I was having a, a session with her and she talked about um, her, her real disappointment and frustration with the team. And when I, I asked and, okay, t- tell me more about that, um, the frustration was I shared what was going on with my cancer and everything and they didn't say anything. They didn't give me anything back. They basically sat there and they just went, oh, that's terrible. And and so I think it's the intent with which you share. All right. So so my question to her was, what did you expect? As a result of sharing what you shared, what were you expecting? And she didn't really know. I said, okay, therein lies the problem. So you're you're upset that you didn't get this attention or something which is you know an irritation for you but you weren't clear about what you you wanted out of sharing that so i I think it's important to um if you're going to share something that's quite deep and personal like just ask yourself why why am i sharing this what's my intention and if it is completely without expectation it's just you know what i think it's important that the people that i work with day in day out are aware of what I'm going through and there's no expectation in return. I just, I just want them to know, think about the context in which they might be responding to that because they're not experts in your disease. They don't understand the emotional challenges that you're facing. And actually maybe they do more than, you know, maybe they've got people that are being affected by this particular, particular illness. And, and it's, it's triggered them to the point where they don't know what to say. Um, so, so many variables to consider when when you're sharing. I think um, on the flip side of that, most of the time we don't share because we're afraid. We're afraid of what the consequences are. We're afraid of what's going to happen. Our boss might fire us. They might think, oh, because I said I had a mental health, health illness that now they're not going to give me a promotion because I won't be able to handle it. Or because I was unwell, you know, they're going to think that I'm not going to work hard uh, or, you know, any number of, so, or because I, I've got a relationship challenge at home with, with my wife or my partner or my husband or whatever it is, um, that's going to, to lead to poor work performance. You know, they're all, um, I get it. I get why you're afraid. I get why you don't want to have that conversation. And I get why it could be even hard, but you can never know what the outcome is as a result of sharing that. Um, And you will feel better if you do it appropriately, of course, um, without expectation, other than it's important that I I share this information with somebody, i.e. my manager or my my, uh, direct colleague that I spend 80% of my time with at work. You know, so um, hopefully that answers your question. That's a great answer, Joan. It actually reminded me, I was teaching a course about um, ethics and stuff in an organisation and one of the people had had cancer and had told the manager but said to the manager, you're not allowed to tell anyone else. (laughs) And so obviously their performance went up and down over time as they were going through treatments and Mm. the team around them were making lots of complaints to the manager, like they're not pulling their weight and stuff like that. So it actually created quite a lot of tension in yeah. that place and the manager couldn't say what was actually going on so it, it yeah. caused all sorts of drama so yeah i, I love yeah. your answers Thank well you. yeah and and you know that that's a great example i've actually been in a, a similar situation where you know someone in my team had, had explained that they had a, a it was a benign brain tumor but you know it wasn't life-threatening but it caused certain problems yep. and then they said oh, it's just between you and me. I don't don't want anyone else to know. And I remember thinking, oh, geez, that's sort of challenging because other people would complain sometimes and thinking, oh, if only they knew, they might have a little bit more empathy. Uh, and so my coaching to myself on that and, and to that person would be working with that individual to get them to a point where they could actually share that information with the rest of the team. Yeah. And so coaching them to that point of, you know what, this is probably a good thing to bring into the workplace and your relationships here so they will understand and you won't have to have this tension that's just bubbling under the surface. Um, So, yeah, awesome. 
Good example. It's Joe. Yeah, and I totally agree with that as well. I think it's such a good example. Um, and thanks for that, Danette, as well. Great. Uh, thanks for sharing that one. That's awesome. Um, I might throw it to Graham now. Graham, what was your question and why did you pick it? Um, so my my question came out of, um, I guess, the topic and some work that we've done on and off with clients around this idea of work life and we used to call it work life balance i love the idea of work life integration because i think if we i wonder whether if we set an expectation that we can literally balance life and work then we're going to be perpetually disappointed um but i do like the idea of work life integration because it sounds feels like something that's more achievable um mm -hmm. and my question really was joe based on the, the work of coaching etc that you've done um what techniques have you found have been really useful for helping people start moving towards better integration? Yeah, yeah, great question. And look, undoubtedly, when we, we talk about an imbalance or lack of integration, it, it almost, well, I'm sure there's there's a few cases in the opposite direction, but it's almost always workaholism wins. You know, it's people just killing themselves at work. They're working too much and it's having the, the very uh, familiar consequence of my family doesn't know who I am, I barely see my partner. Um, I my health is suffering, um, both mental and physical. And and actually, I'm not sure I really like what I do anymore, right? And so that that now, you know, one of the, the words or one of the phrases that's coming out now is burnout. Burnout in the workplace uh, because of just this over emphasis on achievement. Um, for everyone observing, it's really obvious. It's like yeah, there's there's no balance here. And I think that's, um, you know, usually we'd assume uh, that it's got something to do, some, something a little bit more sinister. It's masking something, there's an issue going on. And so they're just throwing themselves into work. And I've certainly used work in that way before, you know, especially in corporate, you know, just dig your heels in, go deeper, prove everyone wrong and, you know, bunker down and work hard. Um, so, so really the coaching uh, I apply to that is getting someone and it comes back to the, the sort of opening around purpose, getting somebody to really name and, and be clear within themselves about what's most important to them. And it seems obvious. It's like, well, yeah, of course I know what's important to me. It's like making money and putting food on the table and roof over my head. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm not talking about what you think you should say in terms of what's important to you. What's actually important to you? Like really deeply let's let's consider that and so giving somebody the space to explore that that question so they can answer it honestly really honestly because for some people they might their their knee jerk or their gut response which is right could be um something about achievement or status right or um or growth it's just how they're going about achieving that right now may be completely misaligned to what's important to them. And they might be able to achieve growth in, in very different ways. So that, that's really the starting point. And it, it's often glossed over or clients want to move on from it really quickly because it's uncomfortable. Because it's a hard question to answer sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Or they'll say, oh, well, that's a wishy-washy question. That's not practical and... Tell me what I need to do. Yeah. You know, do I have to exercise three times a week? And yeah, 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 you can do all of that. Is that what's most important to you? Uh, I don't know. It's too hard. So yeah, they give me something practical, they say. And it's like, well, the practical answer would be stop working so much. Is that helpful? Not really. So let, let's get you really connected to what's most important. Only you know that and only you know how you can achieve that and what's going to really you know hit the nail on the head for you but um but let's let's explore it and it yes it's uncomfortable and yes you will learn something about yourself as a result of doing that exploration um yeah so yeah. does that does that yeah, help yeah it's awesome very much thank you cool. um yeah, amazing. And I actually think that feeds kind of into my question, which I think is has kind of been covered. So I might just sort of jump a little bit uh, to the next step, just because it reminds me of a lot of things that are happening to people that are about my age. So I'm, I'm turning 29 next week. Um, and 
I'm at a stage where a lot of people in my life are at a point where they're deciding maybe they want to change careers uh, that, you know, they've got to this point and they're sort of, Oh, maybe I'll do something else. Uh, especially after lockdown, people are like, I don't know if I particularly want to keep doing this. And I think we've, we've kind of got to that point. Are there things you're saying, you know, it's use uh, look at, look at yourself and what do I really want is a good sort of uh, I guess, compass to some degree. But I think another thing that I'm hearing a little bit is people looking for things that outside of work that might also be kind of fulfilling to kind of help break up the, you know, their life. Is there, do you have any, I guess, tips for people that might be working a lot or might be working in a job that they don't necessarily like right now um, to ways to kind of look beyond uh, employment Mm -hmm. as a way to kind of look into being fulfilled, say? Yeah, definitely. Um, so, so absolutely what you're saying, look, looking external to um, to groups that potentially, um, you know, create an, a, another identity for you to align with. So, you know, for someone, it might be a hobby or an interest. Um, so rather than saying, yeah, I work in a job I don't like very much or be forced to pretend and say, yeah, I work for XYZ company. And it's amazing. Everyone's like, oh, wow, that must be so good. And they're gritting their teeth thinking, if only they knew. If only they knew, but I can't say that because then I would sound terrible and I don't want to be that guy. So I'll just pretend and you know, have this knot in my throat every time I, I talk about what I do. Um, you know, But if they can say, yeah, I'm a fisherman or yeah, I like full driving on the weekends or you know what, I've got this you know, passion for dance or whatever it might be. Um, it, it just creates an, another identity and gives them energy. And I think that's ultimately what we're aiming to, to, to feel in life. It's what gives you energy. You know, if, if your relationship's not doing it, then, you know, get a new one. Uh, or what can you do to actually um, have the conversation that needs to be had to revitalize it? Yeah. You know, I threw that one in there for you guys. Yeah, it's uh... <laughs> uh, you look you, you look like a very connected and lovely couple. So, you know. <laughs> Just got really, really awkward, Joe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> very yeah. welcome. But, yeah. Um, yeah. Mm, yeah, no, I love that. And I think it's uh, definitely true. I know it's definitely something that people are sort of trying to work out, but I love that answer talking about how it gives you energy. That's so true. It's like, yeah, it's exactly right. Um, I might throw to Alan now. Al, what was your question and why'd you pick it? Uh, thanks, Jess. Um, Joe, I was just wondering if you had any stories that illustrate you know, how to integrate work and life. And maybe it's a story of you know, what not to do. I often mm. learn better from a contrast. Yeah, well, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, break all the rules and do what I do or do at least what I say I'm going to do. And um, I'm going to share a story about myself and when I first left corporate. So I was one of those sad bastards that was walk- working corporate and really dragging my feet into work, like actually hated what I was doing toward the end, um, even though it was great work and people were like, oh, that's really amazing. Oh, how did you get into what you do? I was like, yeah, I'm over it. I'm over it. I don't like it. I need to get out of here. So yeah, there was probably a little bit of running away from that. But when I went into my own business and I was like, right, I'm running a coaching company now. Great. Um, I didn't have any clients. I had about three months runway in terms of money in the bank, four kids to feed, you know, a lot to worry about. And I had this calm demeanor about me. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to yoga. And so I went to yoga I was like, that was really good. It, it enabled me to re- remain calm and relaxed. I'm going to do more yoga. And so I probably went too far the other way. And there wasn't a lot of money coming into my bank account. There wasn't a lot of work happening. There was this, I just need to reduce my stress levels and keep my head clear. And there's wisdom in that, by the way. There was a lot of wisdom in that. And I, you know, I don't regret doing that because hey, it, it all worked out okay in the end. But um, yeah, I probably probably overdid it in hindsight. I, I think there needed to be a bit of balance because when I did go into my office, it's almost like I had this, you know, repulsion. I was like, oh, you know, this is scary. This is hard. So I was I was avoiding it. I was avoiding it. So yeah, don't do that. Don't avoid it. Allocate the the time um, to to do something that gives you energy, 
And for me, it was yoga. And, and also I, I do martial arts, I do karate. And so what I found is um, by having one of those classes or two of those classes a week that are completely independent, it's another identity group that you align with. There's people in there from all walks of life. You become friends with them. You share experience with them. It's there. When you're having a shit day, it's there. When you're having a great day, it's there. When you're having lots of travel or your kids are sick or whatever, it's there. It's always there. Even when you're not there, it's there. You know, so that I think is most important, that consistency uh, in some area of your life. It's when we lose all consistency and we don't have anything that's anchoring us is when we start to see things like depression and anxiety really rear their ugly heads because there's just nothing that reminds you of what's real and what's true. It's all in your head. And, and that's a dangerous place. You know, most of the time we don't want to be in our own heads. <laughs> no. It's, a, it's dangerous, right? It is. What I'm hearing there, Joe, is sometimes we've got to go too far to try a bit too much yoga or yeah. to realise then we can come back to that happy medium in between. I think so. Yeah, that that's a you know, great way to uh, to look at what I just said. Yeah, it's, it, you know, that equilibrium is is identified through experimentation and and pushing the boundaries uh, otherwise you'll never know you know because exactly. you, you'll be one of those people that says oh well if you just went to yoga three times a week then you'd never get anything done it's like well actually i realized i wasn't getting much done but i also realized how amazing it felt to do yoga three times a week or four times a week or whatever no, it's more like six times a week but um yeah it I got the benefit of that. There was a benefit to what I was doing because it was a conscious investment. Yes, there was a bit of running away, but it, re- it enabled me to recognize that I was running away and avoiding something, which got me to the action quicker. So, yeah, I agree. Great. Thanks for that, Jad. Hey, right, welcome. Awesome. Well, um, I'm going to jump into Marg's last question, um, which is, I guess, for people that might be in this specific situation, I think it's a great question to ask, which is, do you have any helpful tools specifically aimed more at working mums to help get her brain into work mode after a busy morning of preparing for a family, for daycare, school, et cetera? Yeah. Yeah. So this one's, um, you know, I, I think it's incredibly valuable for working mums, but anyone that's going like transitioning from stressful experience a to potentially stressful experience b and it it was a concept that i first learned about when i saw uh, dr adam fraser speak and he calls it the third space and and it's an idea um uh, but it's a really good one and and so you know i used to ride my bike to work and it wasn't like one of those fancy bikes with uh you know i didn't wear the lycra or anything not that there's anything wrong with that uh, I just get on my mountain bike and chuck a kid on the back and take him off to daycare and, you know, get a bit of a workout. That ride pre and post work for me was my third space to the point where, you know, sometimes I'd forget that I'd even ridden certain chunks of it. I was just so automated with it, uh, which is probably dangerous, but, um, you know, it was, it was such an important part of my day in the end and at the beginning just to have that opportunity. And for me, it was physical. Now, I'm not saying physical circuit breakers work for everybody and, and that a third space is, is physical for everybody. Some people might find meditation the thing that works for them. Uh, personally, that, that's not what I seek when I want to create a circuit breaker. I find the physical stuff where I, I feel my heart pumping and my sweat glands going, that's, to me, that that just resets me. It recalibrates me, defrags my brain, um, yeah. So I'd say find whatever it is for you that enables you to step into that third space where your focus and your attention is completely absorbed in that activity. And, and it just breaks it up because yes, I know what that feels like to, to have, you know, sick kids and, you know, nappies and bathing time and, lunches and dinner and stuff getting thrown at the walls and yeah it's a nightmare it's an absolute nightmare for all involved including the kids i'm sure um although they do look like they're having fun um <laughs> little buggers uh so yeah give yourself that that chance to circuit break things and and step from 
one activity the other without it it just it's like you're just smashing into everything for the whole day you're like you, you you're out of breath you know and and focusing on breath i think is a great one too i know if if like i go through phases where i just like i'm generally pretty calm but i do go through phases where i notice my my level of emotional regulation is not good and so i i've got a smartwatch and it's got breathing techniques it's got prompts and it's just basic box breathing but it just buzzes every time you need to breathe so i find it really useful because then i'm not counting uh, i'm not like it it's like buzzes breathe in hold your breath buzz breathe out like it just it's a really good tool actually and um so yeah if you're struggling with meditation or you you know you find all the breathing stuff you know difficult to track you yeah, know get a smartwatch. yeah yeah great and um I've, Joe, thanks so much for the conversation today. So many good things. I think even from the very get-go when you were describing the personal and work-life integration, that already put us on a great path. And I feel like we've had so many good answers. Um, I might just throw to John, any final thoughts you had on today's conversation and work and personal life integration? Yeah, thank you, Joe. It's been great, especially just listening in the car, you know, in that, well, in that third space of being able to learn something. Mine's a very physical space as well, but um, it's balancing that with yeah, what gives you energy. And it's not just mm. what gives you energy in terms of work, but how do you find that third space that, that gives you energy as well? Mm. So yeah, they're my takeaways and you know, ask the hard questions because they do push the boundaries. Um, and I still can't get over that Jez is 29 and God, he's old. <laughs> that's it the graying hair there that's it um, <laughs> at least you've got it that's it <laughs> um, awesome thank you so much john and thanks for jumping on the call today um i'm gonna throw to alan alan any final thoughts you had on today's conversation and work and personal life integration yes but to me the big standout was you know what is my intention and the one standing out for me is being vulnerable and being prepared to go too far at you know, things like yoga or pilates and I'm wondering whether I could even go too far, but I'm going to give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> Love that, Al. We're excited to hear how that goes. We'll uh, hear at the start of a lot more podcasts in the future. So very exciting, Al. Um, Danette, uh, any final thoughts on today's conversation and work and personal life integration? Yeah, I loved it. And um I love that whole thing, you know, when people go to the extreme in something and how you sit with them and start to not give them what they can do, but actually start to come back to what's super important around their purpose and things. So, you know, because we do definitely, and I'm sure you do absolutely, um, Joe, is see many people who they do get to that extreme and they can't see their way through it because it's become normalised for them and how important it is to come back and reset to that purpose. So that was super, loved the whole conversation. We're definitely going to get you back again if you'll come. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> thank you so much for that, Danette. And uh, Graham, any final thoughts on today's conversation and work and personal life integration? Joe's, Joe's sitting there thinking, how do I sort of put one together? Joe, it's been amazing. Thank you. There's so much to um, that we could dive deeper into. I, I was thinking during one of your answers to um, someone else's question about that, um, you know, we talked about sort of vulnerability and, and bringing more of yourself into the workplace, but then thinking about the 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 dance with psychological safety and and I suspect that on some level, if I'm with good intention and and with some boundaries, if I'm more vulnerable in the workplace as a leader, maybe that helps create some psychological safety. But if I go too far, it might. Sure, I'm not sure. Um, conversation for mm. next time. Mm. Um, thank you for that. Curious about Al. Can I go too far? Too far, Al, would be 15 minutes in the ice bath, but interested to watch you turn into a human ice cube. No. Have um, emergency people on standby, please. And it's not covered by workers' comp. I just check. <laughs> the question I had for you was Have you ever, yeah, because I'd love the um, third space. We've yeah. uh, read the book when it came out um, and mm. love the model. I think it's just a, it's a great tool, a great sort of mental model that you can use or process. Mm. And I was curious about, because it almost sounds like, you know, when you're on your bike riding to work, almost sort of dropping into that flow state where, yep. you know, you're just having an awesome time. And I wondered whether you ever got to work, sort of got off your bike, got off your bike and, and looked behind and realised that your child was still in the seat behind you. <laughs> um, that was the thing. Uh, 
Um, you don't have to answer that, but seriously, <laughs> thank you. we'd love to get you back on. I think there's yes. so much more we could talk about around yes. this. Really, yeah. really important, really valuable. So thank you. Yeah, no, you're very welcome. Very welcome. Yeah, and I just have to echo the everything that everyone said on top of I feel like I've taken away even like I said from the beginning before we even got into the questions I was taking stuff away and then just understanding where you can become more of yourself through other hobbies and groups and stuff that is so valuable so I really took that away as well before we wrap up Joe do you have any final uh, thoughts on today's conversation and work and personal life integration oh look uh, I think it, it's a lifelong process right? There are times where you're at work and you're flying and it's amazing. And the same role uh, a week later can feel like the absolute pits. So, so go easy on yourself. You know, um, I think if you're a manager, know that, you know, the majority of how people feel in their team is influenced by you and your behavior. So if you feel a bit ratchet, um, guess what? Yeah. Everyone else is feeling pretty much the same. It's just an extension. So yeah, be mindful of that. And you might think, and, and this is a really interesting one, you might think that you're really good at hiding your personal stuff at work. You're not. You're really not. Everyone can see it. And what's worse is they might, and most likely, they'll erroneously determine what's going on inside your head. They'll make it up. In the absence of clear information and communication, people just make stuff up. And so you don't really want to let them do that, do you? Wouldn't you just rather be honest and then they know and they don't have to spread all of the information about what they think you think? Because, yeah, that's even worse. To try and get in someone else's head, yeah, that's even more dangerous than staying in your own. So, yeah. But awesome. Thought. Love it. Well, um, Joe, I'm sure people have listened to this and they want to find you. Where are the best places for them to uh, get in contact with you? Yeah, LinkedIn. That's probably the the place where I hang out the most. But uh, I've got a website, joehart.com.au uh, or, or my email, joe at joehart.com.au. Um, but yeah, all the, all the usual places on socials, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Insta, Twitter, but mainly LinkedIn. It's my, my uh, tool of choice, shall we call it. Perfect. Well, um, I'll have the link to that one in the podcast description. So you can go click on that, get in contact with Joe. Like everyone has said, we'd love to have you back on in the future. Uh, what a great conversation. And to everybody that's listening at home, have a magical week.